For thousands of years, humans have evolved for survival. From the Homo erectus to the Homo sapiens, food has always been key to our survival. Yet even now, when we're living in the Anthropocene era, people still have trouble getting their hands on this commodity. In fact, one in 10 people die globally from food contamination. In our grocery stores, we have 8,112 colonies of bacteria every square inch. In contrast, a toilet handle only has 30 colonies of bacteria. Yet we still entertain this delusion that our grocery stores are perfectly safe, that our food is perfectly safe and clean. This is the problem that I want to solve, using phage therapy to improve sanitation in our foods. Let's first go over what a bacteriophage is. A phage is a virus that kills bacteria, only bacteria, and they have an icosahedral capsid head which contains all our genetic information as well as a tail, base plate, and fibrous legs, which are used to attach to and kill the bacterium. They can also be roughly categorized by shape into pleomorphic, filamentous, tailed, and polyhedral phages. Tailed make up 96% of the phage population. So the phage has two life cycles, which are pretty important to keep in mind. The lytic cycle is short and sweet. In the lytic cycle, the phage uses its fibrous legs to attach to the bacterium. Then, using a syringe-like motion, it injects the DNA from its head into the bacterium. And this DNA then hijacks the bacterium so that the bacterium creates, creates phage parts. And then these phage parts assemble, creating baby phages. And using certain chemicals, such as lysine and endomycin, it punctures the cell wall causing the bacterium to explode. The lysogenic cycle is similar. However, this time, the phage integrates its DNA into the bacterium's chromosome. And this is called a prophage, so that the phage DNA always gets copied along with the bacterium. The lytic phages are what we aim to use to eliminate the food pathogens. Temperophages, also lysogenic phages, are a bit troublesome, which I'll get into later. So first, let's look at some problems in the food industry today. Pasteurization, high pressure processing, chemical disinfectants, and irradiation are what are currently used today. And while they can eradicate food pathogens, they also have considerable drawbacks. One of these is that due to their corrosive nature, they often damage the processing equipment. And secondly, and more importantly, they also harm the beneficial bacteria that are found naturally in foods. So one of the techniques that's used for food pathogen detection is called phage display. And this is super important because this way we can find the corresponding phage to the food pathogen. <clears throat> phage display, well, for, the, for simplicity, Let's take an apple. Our target protein will be protein 1, and the gene that encodes it is gene 1. So in this technique, gene 1 is inserted into a phage coat protein, which is right here. Once gene 1 is inserted, the phage displays protein 1 on the outside, with gene 1 on the inside. And this way, we actually establish a connection between the genotype, which is gene 1, and the phenotype, which is protein 1. And this way, the, display, the displayed protein can be screened against other proteins, peptides, or DNA sequences, so that we can actually study the interactions between the displayed protein and other molecules. The second method is phage biocontrol. And this is used to completely eradicate the bacteria, the harmful bacteria, from the foods. In phage biocontrol, we use lytic phages in order to actually eradicate the harmful bacteria without harming the normal microflora in the foods. So essentially, for this method to work, we need really lytic phages, strongly lytic phages, and preferably with a very broad host range. However, this can also be mitigated by using phage cocktails, 
which are a mix of different phage species. Phage biocontrol does have quite a few drawbacks, however. Here are some of the drawbacks. Firstly, it's very important, and also it's pretty difficult, however, to identify which phages are lytic and which phages are temperate. And this is really important because we need lytic phages. Temperate phages, on the other hand, because the phage DNA of temperate phages is included in the bacterium's chromosome, they can actually promote the transfer of undesirable genes, which could lead to new pathogenic strains. The second one has to do with harsh chemicals. With phage preparation, phages are often refrigerated, and when used with chemical sanitizers, they need to be applied separately. And this is because harsh chemicals can actually inactivate phage particles, rendering phage biocontrol ineffective. So using phage, phage biocontrol and phage display, we can eradicate the pathogens we find in our food today. Phages are re really cool technology, and they also have several other uses, such as helping with the antibiotic resistance, generating anti-cancer agents, and many more. So I hope all of you have learned something new today, and to keep in mind that not all viruses are actually bad.